A very good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I'm Siksha Sharma. Let's take a look into the headlines in the beginning. Mao's chairman directs party MPs to play a proactive role in parliament. Speaker summons top three leaders to end house impasse. Supreme Court orders investigation of high-level officials in the Lalita residence land grab case. Arrest warrants issued against four former ministers. Niger shuts down the country's airspace, citing military intervention threat. Move follows as deadline given by Niger's neighbors to restore elected government order. Welcome back to NTV News. We take a look into news in detail now. Prime Minister and CPN Mao Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal has directed his party lawmakers to play a proactive role in the parliament. Prime Minister Dahal gave such instruction during the parliamentary party meeting of Mao Center held at Darbar this morning. The Prime Minister on the occasion asked the party lawmakers to play effective role in both the houses of federal parliament. Meanwhile, separate meetings of both the Houses, the National Assembly and House of Representatives have been called for 1 p.m. Today, the main opposition, CP and UML, of late has been obstructing the House proceedings over the smuggling of 100 kilograms of gold through the Trivivan International Airport. Meanwhile, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Devraj Kimire, has called a meeting of the top leaders of three political parties today to remove the deadlock surfaced in the parliament. In a meeting to take place at the office of the Speaker in Singadarbar, Speaker Kimire would once again request the ruling and opposition party leaders to end deadlock in the parliament, his secretariat informed. The Speaker Gimiri has invited Prime Minister and CPN Mao Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal, along with it NC President Chair Radhu Deuba, main opposition leader KP Sharma Oli, and their chief whips uh, to the meeting. Today, the parliamentary party meeting has been uh, obstructing, uh, has been obstructed, calling for the the parliamentary meetings. Uh, the both the houses of the parliament have been obstructed, calling for the formation of a high-level probe committee on the smuggling of gold via the Tribhuvan International Airport. The National Assembly meeting has also been put on hold. Efforts for consensus were made in view of the meeting of both the houses. Uh, the meeting uh, of both the houses has been uh, summoned for 1 p.m. in the afternoon today. Kathmandu District Court has issued an arrest warrant against four former ministers on the Lalita Nivas land grab case. Among those issued warrant against are Nepali Congress leader and former Minister for Physical Infrastructure and Planning, Physical Infrastructure and Transport, Vijay Kumar Gakshidar, Minister of for State, Sanjay Shah, and then Ministers for Land Reform, Chandra Dev Joshi and Dambar Bahadur Shrestha. CIB Chief and Additional Inspector General of Police, Kiran Bajracharya, said police will now act upon the court orders for to further the land grab case. So far, 20 people have been arrested and investigated upon this case. The land, the CIA had named 175 persons, including one former deputy prime minister, three former ministers in the infamous Lalita Nivas land, Nivas land case. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court on Sunday ordered to investigate the high-level officers and officials in the case, the order has paved way for the investigation of former Prime Ministers Madhav Kumar Nepal and Dr. Baburam Bhattarai in the Lalita residence land grab scam. And let's take a look into a short break here. Monis follows up next to stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News. Taking a look into more developments, at least three persons injured are injured when a landslide fell on a moving jeep, jeep at a Siddha Baba area on the Butwal Palpa Road section along the Siddhartha Highway. According to the Highway Security and Traffic Management Office, Butwal, three persons, including the jeep driver, sustained injuries when landslide with a boulder fell on the jeep in front of a temple nearby. Vishnu Prasad Pandey, a local, informed that three people, including the driver, were injured when the landslide rolled down on the moving Zeep. The injured are undergoing treatment at Lumbini Provincial Hospital. The landslide with boulder completely damaged the front part of the Zeep. Pandey said, though the landslide obstructed the Butwal Palpa Road section for some hours, 
It has now resumed, the Traffic Management Office of Butwal said. A breakthrough in the construction of the main tunnel and emergency tunnel of the Nagdunga tunnel is expected uh, to tunnel way is expected today. The rescue tunnel is likely to see completion as only a meter was left to be opened as of Sunday evening. The team, including Physical Infrastructure and Transport Minister Prakash Jwala, is uh, scheduled to reach the construction site today to observe the progress. It has been four years since the construction of the Nagadunga Sisnikola tunnel. The distance of the main tunnel is 2.688 kilometers. Taking you to the international front where Niger's coup leaders have closed the country's airspace until further notice, citing the threat of military intervention. Flight tracking website Flightradar24 is showing that there are currently no aircraft in Niger's sky. The West African group of countries ECOWAS had earlier warned it could use force if President Mohamed Bazoum was not reinstated by 11 GMT on Sunday. A junta spokesman says Niger's armed forces are ready to defend the country. The military takeover has been internationally condemned, including by former colonial power France and the rest of the European Union, as well as the United Nations and the United States. Let's take a look into yet another short break. Stay with us for more developments. Welcome back to NTV News to our other development. Four Syrian soldiers have been killed and another four wounded in an overnight Israeli missile attack, Syria state media say. Sana News Agency is quoting a military source as saying the strike near the capital Damascus also caused some material damage. Some of the Israeli missiles were shot down. The source claims Israel has so far made no comments. It frequently targets military sites in Syria linked to Iran-backed militants. The eldest son of Cambodia's long-term ruler has been endorsed as the country's next premier in a formality confirming the transition of power. On Monday, Cambodia's king issued a decree stating Hun Manit will succeed Hun Sen, who has ruled for 38 years. Hun Sen announced he would step down just days after the 23 July election, which critics said was not democratic. Hun Manit's appointment still needs to be confirmed by parliament on 22nd of August, but it is expected to sail through a national assembly where 120 of 125 seats are controlled by Hun Sen's Cambodian People's Party. Meta boss Mark Zuckerberg has said he is not holding his breath over a proposed cage fight with rival Elon Musk. In a post on the new social media app threats, Zuckerberg said he had proposed 26 August for the showdown. The two became direct competitors in July with the launch of threats. Asked by a threats user whether the fight has been mutually agreed upon, Zuckerberg responded that it was more like funding secured in an apparent reference to post made by Musk in 2018 when he said the same about plans to take electric car company Tesla into private hands. Let's take a look into the highlights of what's coming up next. India's space agency has released the first images of the moon taken by the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft, which entered the lunar orbit on Saturday. The images show the craters on the lunar surface getting larger and larger as the spacecraft draws closer. Chandrayaan-3 with an orbiter, lander and a rover is due to land on the moon's surface on 23rd of August. If successful, India will be the first country to land near the moon's little explored south pole. It will also become only the fourth to achieve a soft landing on the moon after the US, the former Soviet Union and China. And that was the wrap-up of the sports front. We've come to the end of the bulletin. A quick reminder of the top stories. Mao's chairman directs party MPs to play a proactive role in parliament. Speakers summon top three leaders to end house impasse. 
Supreme Court orders investigation of high-level officials in the Lalita residence land grab case. Arrest warrants issued against four former ministers. Niger shuts down the country's airspace, citing military intervention threat. Move follows as deadline given by Niger's neighbors to restore elected government. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead. Namaste.